Welcome back. In the previous steps, we looked at JDBC, Spring JDBC and JPA. With the JPA repository, it made it very easy to talk to the database. All that we need to do is to create an entity manager and then we can use find by ID. You can use find methods, merge methods or remove methods to talk to the database. This made it very easy because we don't really need to write any queries. All the queries were generated by Hibernate, which is the JPA implementation. However, if you look at this person JBA repository, you can see that whether this is for person or let, let's say there is a to-do JPA repository which is present, it would look exactly the same as this. So instead of the person, you would have to do. Instead of the person, you would have to do. But other than that, the logic here would still remain completely the same. Instead of person here, if you replace person by to-do in here, 90% of the work would automatically be done. Spring Data identified this. It says, okay, there is a lot of duplication that happens when we write our repositories. Can we simplify this and can we make it further easier to define our repositories? That's where Spring Data comes in with the concept of predefined repositories. It defines something called a JPA repository for JPA, which we can use to create these kind of methods very easily. So things like find all, find by ID, update, insert, delete by ID, all of them are predefined inside the JPA repository. So let's look at that in this specific step. Let's create a new interface. Very important, it's an interface, not, not a class. And I will call this person Spring data repository and I will create it in package spring data. Let's do a finish and I have to make this implement a specific interface. What is the interface that I need to implement? It's JPA repository. Actually, I need to say extends because this is an interface and JPA repository is also an interface. JPA repository and what entity do we want to manage with this? Person. Let's define that person is the entity I would want to def manage. And what is the primary key for it? The primary key is an integer. Let's import person in and that's it. What we'll do is I'll copy the JPA demo application and create another one called data spring data demo application. And I'll comment out the annotation at Spring Boot application in the JPA demo application so that it's not picked up. So now we have Spring Data demo application which is present in here. Instead of using the person JPA repository, what we will do is we would be using a person Spring Data repository. Let's import it in. You'd see that most of the code works as it is because we have actually followed the conventions which are used by Spring Data when defining our methods. In Spring Data, if you there's a method called find by ID. If you pass the ID, it will be able to get the data for you. However, one small thing is in Spring Data, there are no insert and update methods, very similar to your entity manager. So entity manager has only one method, right? So it's merge. And inside the data JPA repository, the method is called save. So whether you want to do an update or an insert, you have to just say save. And you would see that now, within less than a few minutes, we were able to implement all the methods using Spring Data JPA repository. Let's now launch up the Spring Data demo application. Right click, run as Java application. Make sure that you are launching up the Spring Data demo application and not the other ones. Because the other ones, the Spring Boot application is commented and they might give you an error when you try to start them up. Now, you'd see that there is no change in results compared to what was present when we were using the JPA repository. So at the end, we have these three rows printed. Over the course of last few steps, what we did was we took the entire journey. We started with JDBC, we moved to JPA, and now we made use of Spring Data JPA we created a repository with it and we saw how everything becomes much more easier. So with Spring Data, all that you need to define is your entities 
and your interfaces. Once you define them, it becomes very easy to manage your entities and talk to your database. Until the next step, bye-bye.